what up welcome back to another video today I'm showing you something a little interesting uh, this video was originally supposed to be about putting an SSD in the Krappintosh 2 but as per usual uh, I got distracted by another project this is what I'm liking to uh, blah, what I have been calling the Hackintosh Pro. It's just some random looking case. Here, I'll even show you. This is what the entire front of it looks like. It's absolutely nothing special. I'm gonna uh, readjust the tripod here a little bit. Absolutely nothing special, but the inside is what matters. So we're gonna take the screws out. I don't know what I'm gonna name. Oh, damn it! Come on! There we go. I don't know what I'm gonna name this video yet, but it's probably going to involve the price of this build. So we'll quickly go. Go over how much each component inside of here costed. The first main component we're gonna look at is the motherboard, the processor, and the memory. Not the cooler. The cooler was free because I actually had to swap the cooler because originally it came with a tower cooler that didn't fit in this case. So I had to replace it with a shorter Alpine 11 cooler. It says it can cool the processor okay under there. And I just had it for years, so that's the cooler. But in terms of the motherboard, the RAM, and the CPU, this is an ASRock believe it's an ASRock H77 Pro-A4 or something. I'll put some text on the screen to correct it. I forgot. And it's got 16 gigabytes of DDR3. You can kind of see it over there. Two sticks of 8 gigabytes of DDR3. And underneath the uh, Arctic Core is a Core i7. Uh, Core i7 3770 uh, processor. This was bought for $5 at a garage sale recently, which is a way really fucking good deal. It was sold to me as having an i5 in it, but the fact that in general it had an i7, it was just a complete system. Just the board, the processor, and the RAM, also the tower core for $5 was a crazy deal. The other component right here, this power supply was bought from a local computer place for a about about $25. I originally bought a 475 watt unit, but it did not fit. So this is the replacement unit I got. It's a 300 watt, just I think it's a Delta Electronics uh, power supply. And uh, he gave me, he said I could grab another $10 item. So I grabbed a, uh, thinking I would need it, which it turns out I didn't need it. I need grab the Dahl Molex 2 4-pin CPU power, but it turns out this will run fine on just a single 4-pin instead of the 8-pin. So that was about $25. This case was $30 from the computer store. From the same computer store, actually. It's just literally nothing special. It's the only case they had. It was $10 cheaper than buying one on Amazon, so I think I got a reasonable deal. This fan did not come with the case, this was an extra $5 purchase. Uh, the DVD drive came with the case. I had the SATA cables laying around. This graphics card is a, uh, I believe this was before AMD bought ATI, but it's an ATI Radeon 48, or that. Yeah. ATI Radeon HD 4870. This was specifically chosen mostly because A, I wanted to get it out of my graphics card drawer, and then B, it turns out that this has Mac OS support because there was actually a Mac version of the 4870. So, yeah, I just put that in there and it works pretty well. The hard drive is an enterprise ready graded Dell 500 gigabyte drive manufactured by Western Digital that came with my server but I replaced it so now it's just in here 
And uh, the power supply came with a Dal Molex to PCI 6 pin. So that's how there's two 6 pins plugged in here. So in general, this computer was about $65 to put together. the most expensive parts being the power supply and the case but this actually gets pretty good performance I ran some benchmarks well I was talking to one of my friends who owns a 2008 Mac Pro ran some benchmarks and like this thing absolutely smashed it in uh, CPU performance I was expecting this thing to lose because like it's a 2008 Mac Pro with two processors that should kick this thing's ass but it didn't so yeah, it's a pretty powerful machine, what it is, besides the graphics card. This graphics card is really underwhelming, but it's better than the uh, iGPU. The iGPU is terrible when you compare it to this fucking thing. But yeah, we'll get it plugged in, and I'll show you what it can do, and yeah, we'll be right back. Alright, we're back. I plugged everything in and a bottle of Powerade has joined us on set today because it's it's extremely fucking hot out today. But now we're just going to boot up the machine. So I press the power button on the machine and it should come up here. As you can see, as rock. And now it will boot to the boot picker. The open core boot picker. Which, unlike last time, I've actually bothered to install the fancy graphic effects, so we can see we have a Windows drive and a Macintosh drive. So, first we'll boot the Mac drive. This is running Mac OS 14 Samanoa, which normally won't run, but, uh, there's a, because of lack of AVX2, but there's a way you can force it to install, uh, non-AVX2 libraries and that's thanks to Rosetta so that's pretty much what we've done here I've used that text to force this to install the Rosetta shared cache which does not use AVX2 so we can run it on our AVX less processor this is gonna take a moment to boot up though so we'll probably cut forward a little bit till when it's done booting alright as you can see we have made it to the login screen so we can type in my password and it will log me in very silly I don't have that much software to demo on here but I do have a couple of things I could show you also as you can see we have working mostly working video acceleration as you can see we're here in the desktop the first thing I want to show you if we go to the about this Mac, you can see we have a we're pretending to be a 2019 Mac Pro. We got our ATI Radeon HD 4800, quad core Intel uh, i7 3770, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and this is thanks in part to the open. We are using a tool called uh, Open Core. Legacy Patcher, yeah, right here. Open Core Legacy Patcher. This tool allows that ancient. You can see here if we go to the uh, the root patching, we could see here we have a. Uh, or no, not Terra Scale Two. We have a Terra Scale One GPU, and because of this, the non-metal configuration, it just gives us good enough acceleration. And I can also show you, uh, I have Geekbench on here, yeah, Geekbench. I have Geekbench on, yeah, shut up, I, I, I don't care. You can see here, if we go to CPU, yeah, Intel Core i7, 3770 uh, CPU. I actually benched, I actually ran this benchmark and uploaded it to Geekbench and compared it to one of my friends, 2008 Mac Pro and it scored at least double in the single core performance so for for about sixty five dollars that's a pretty damn good deal uh... we can browse the web unfortunately there's a couple of problems with browsing the internet that i don't know why they occur they just do it's really weird and to demonstrate this we're gonna open 
Firefox. This is Firefox ESR because I was hoping because ESR is slightly older it would fix the problem. It did not fix the problem. Firefox just doesn't want to work on this system. Like if we go down here to utilities and we open the activity monitor you can kind of see that like not much is going on even though Firefox should realistically be loading it's just not and even when it does load it doesn't want to load any tabs it's really fucking weird other than that though I do have a browser that works on here if you don't want to use Safari it's un unfortunately Chromium I'm not the biggest fan of Chromium so we're just gonna quit Firefox go away I uh, should also quit Geekbench. Even though we are not starved for RAM in the slightest, it's still good practice to close ever. Shut up, Chromium. I don't care. Alright. So, we can play back videos, find and stuff. To do that, we'll go, like, grab some Bring Us Studios video, I guess. Since I, I've been watching this guy on loop for the past couple days. We gotta turn it down a little bit, mind you. PS2 jumps. Yeah, as you can see, it plays videos fine. You could use this as your daily driver machine. You can also probably use it to do, like, office tasks and stuff. But that's only one half of the experience of this machine. Because I put Windows on here. So we're just going to quickly boot uh, Microsoft's OS and... Oh, no, I want to restart. We're going to boot... Microsoft's OS and we'll be right back. Alright, we're back on Windows 7. We don't have every driver. What the f Shut up, Microsoft. I don't care. We have pretty much every driver installed. So if we go dev... I, I don't care, Microsoft. Leave, leave me alone. I haven't gotten around to installing our drivers yet, but we do have the Radeon, ATI Radeon HD card installed, let me zoom in to see that, yeah, see, it's not the best driver in the world, it's the driver that shipped with Windows 7, but it's, it's, it's good enough. Now, you might be wondering, why do we put Windows 7 on here? Mostly just because I wanted to be fast and use that GPU for something. I actually got a really good deal on that GPU to an extent. Sure, it's a GPU from like 2008, but somebody was just throwing it out for free, so I took it, and now it's in here. And to prove that this is good at games, I got, since I don't have the internet internet driver installed yet, uh, I got uh, a copy of UT2004. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install that. Oh no, the tripod. I got a copy of uh, UT2004. And the system requirements for this game. Uh, DirectX. Video. This runs on a GeForce 2. Oh, maybe this won't be the best uh, game to test this with, but I don't really have anything else to test this with on hand. So we're just gonna install UT2004. Yep. I'm sorry, this video is a little scatterbrained. I just really wanted to show off this. I want to call it like a $65 gaming PC, but I'm probably going to call it, keep calling it a Hackintosh because it's a pretty good Hackintosh for what it is. It's got good CPU performance, decent video card performance, and that's about as much as you can ask for in a machine of that price range. Alright. Uh, next. I accept the terms of the license agreement next. God damn it, what is my fucking CD key? Alright, there, took my CD key. Also, Windows 7 runs. I'm gonna zoom in for this. Windows 7 actually runs. Shut, shut up! Please, just shut up. Windows 7 actually runs pretty damn quick on here. Like,. It's got a fast hard drive plugged into the SATA 3 bus, then the SATA 2 bus has the uh, has just the DVD drive plugged in, but yeah, it goes pretty quickly on here. So we're just going to let this install 
Unreal Tournament, and yeah. Alright, we're back. Hey, you probably saw the note, but that install took way longer than I thought it would. So, yeah. Uh, Unreal Tournament 04 is now installed. We're gonna crank its settings up to max and see if it runs okay. <laughs> In video, the way it's meant to be played, yeah, whatever. We got fucking AMD Radeons. <laughs> we don't need none of your fucking NVIDIA shit. Alright. Let's see. Uh, max the resolution. Max the resolution. 32 bit color depth. Uh, highest. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. Highest, is, yep, highest, highest, I, shut up, I'm fine, highest, high, high, highest, shit, 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 alright, everything's on high, so, let's see, can I, just play a, uh, like a quick game or something? Uh, sure, whatever. Just let me play a game, okay? That's what I'm here to test. How well does it- Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, we got the highest settings, and this game runs fucking great. Die, 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 die. I haven't played that much UT2004, but I have played the uh, Game of the Year version of the 1999 original, which is one of my favorite games of all time. What? Where did I? Oh, I hit the team say button. Okay. Uh, let's go try and find one more person to kill or something. Whoa. Woo, minigun. Hey, yo, let's fucking go. Yeah, as you can see, this machine definitely has some form of gaming performance. I don't know how well this 08 card would scale to modern games. Probably not very well. But, for lighter games, it'll probably be fine. Like, I know I threw Minecraft 1.20.4 at this, and it got about 60... It actually got, like over a hundred FPS. I actually got over a hundred FPS when I uncapped the frame rate. So uh, this definitely can game. I just fucking annihilated that guy. Die. Die. <laughs> he bro became a fucking skeleton. Holy shit. I need to play this game more. It's pretty good. I think that's enough of demonstrating the fact that, that this system can in fact game so yeah that's about all i got yeah i know this video was exceedingly lazy exceedingly put together probably underprepared i didn't have that much to show i just wanted to show that yes it runs the newest mac os that was 14.5 probably a little away from the latest salmonola patch but uh salmonola whatever i hate pronouncing that word mac os 14 patch but it's still pretty recent, and it runs Windows, and it can play games. That's about all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Stick around for hopefully better prepared videos. And yeah, we'll, I'll see you people later. Bye-bye.